well, here's the video most of you have been asking for. This is the bio on my 1957 Chevrolet. I don't have a lot of videos. There's a few little ones of when I was building it. Um, at the time, I was under contract with Discovery filming uh, the show Vegas Rat Rods in Las Vegas. Um, but here it is. It was wrecked in Lake Havasu in like 1974. It sat in an impound yard for many, many years. Um, pretty hard to find a 1957 Chevy two-door hardtop Bel Air these days. And uh, I only paid $2,000 for this car. So, hope you enjoy the video. So, before we get too much into this video, let's head over to uh, Bill Kriegler. We'll head over to his shop and talk to him about how I bought this car. Bill, how long have you been in business here? 50 something years. 50 something years. When did you move to Lake Havasu? 1970, March 31st. So he has lived here in Havasu as long as I've been alive. So uh, tell me about that 57 Chevy that you towed years well, ago. When we were had tow trucks, it was in an accident. I believe it was July 4th weekend of 1972 and which time we towed in it was been sitting in the impound yard for 50 years so i opened my little shop old school garage and repair and i was buying parts here from bill and i would come in here to get cummins parts all the time because he was the head cummins dealer he had cummins on the side of the building and everything and it was bill's truck and auto and everybody knew this place so every time I would come in here, I would sit right here in this very chair, and Bill, he would always say, what can I do for you today? And I'd say, I need the keys to that 57 in the yard over there. And every time he'd be like, that 57 is not for sale. And Bill, what possessed you one day to finally give in and get rid of the old 57. Well, I finally said that age was catching up with me and I wasn't going to do nothing with it, so I wanted to give it to somebody who could put it back on the road where it belonged. So when I when I first got the thing, like, oh man, you talk about buyer's remorse. Oh my gosh, that car was in such bad shape, but I decided that Bill had faith in me putting it back together. And there was one thing I was going to do is actually drive that thing back to his shop. So that's what I did. So here's a picture of this place. When do you think this picture was taken, Bill? 1981. This is 1981. Yeah. That picture, it's hard to see, but in that picture, that car is actually sitting right here here in the corner of the yard. All right, so here's some really crazy details about the car. When I got this car, this right front fender, as you can imagine, was this long. That's how far this was pushed back. If you look really close here at the body, you can see where the fender actually hit the cowl. It's still bent up pretty bad. The dash was buckled. This door, I had the original passenger door and it was completely buckled in half. So this side of the car actually took the brunt of all the damage when the car was wrecked. But imagine that front fender being two feet long. The frame itself was actually pushed clear back. This tire was right here when I got the car. After I got the car home, I had buyer's remorse. I mean like the worst buyer's remorse you could ever have on a vehicle. Originally, I thought I could make a race car out of it. I thought I could salvage this or that. And as I got looking into it, I realized it was going to take a lot of parts and a lot of cars to put this thing together. When I picked the car up, I actually picked it up with Tomater. Um, this is way back in 2016. I was working at Welder Up. I was under contract, so we were filming. I was going back and forth a lot, but I had this project going on the side in the garage.
So what I did, just, just like I do with all my project, I opened up uh, Craigslist at the time because Facebook Marketplace was kind of non-existent. So I come across an advertisement for a frame and it was $300. So I get a hold of the guy, they're in Deer Valley. It's a father and son project. They've got a 57 Chevy that was fully restored. And the father decided he wanted an Art Morrison chassis. So what they did was they put an Art Morrison chassis in his car, pulled the original chassis out, and listed it for sale. Turned out it was powder coated, it had tubular control arms, it had power steering, it had disc brakes, it was still leaf spring in the rear, but it was powder coated and just in awesome condition. So I gave them $300, I took a tow bar, and I headed for Deer Valley, Arizona to pick it up. Once I got the frame back to Havasu, I decided I wanted to put a four-link suspension in the back, and I wanted to put QA1 coilover shocks on it. So what I did was I took a, a Ford Explorer 8.8 .8 rear axle, and those have a long side, short side axle, so I put two short side axles in it and narrowed it three inches. That allowed me to put a full 10 inch mag wheel under it because I knew I was going to put mag wheels on it no matter what I did, whether I turned it into a race car or, or how I went with the car. So once I got the four link suspension done, the narrowed 8.8, .8, it was time to put the chassis under the car. And when I And when I started putting the chassis into the car, it told me a lot of things about the car. The entire body of this car is racked, three quarters of an inch. So it twisted the frame when it hit that. It almost pitched the back window out. This is the original rear window. The rear window's never been out of the car. And I used it as a gauge when I pulled the car back. So what I did was I bolted the driver's side of the body down. Then I hooked my forklift up and I had come alongs and I had metal jacks, I had a port of power, and then I had a come along hooked between the A pillar and the B pillar because as the car was moving, it was basically opening this gap up and this door didn't fit. So I had to pull this part of the car with it to keep it going. And these 57s, they're not very good in an accident. They move very easy. I was developing cracks up here. This was splitting out. with this car for a long time on whether I should put it back together or whether I should send it out to pasture to sit where it's been for years. Let me know in the old comments what you think. Was it a good idea putting it back together the way I did or should I have just left her be? I start looking for just 57 parts in general and I come across this guy who has this entire front clip and I mean he had the chrome trim, he had everything and he was gonna cut it. He had pencil marks on it where he was gonna make it into a barbecue. And 
he decided not to do the project and he had all these parts in his yard i gave him 200 dollars for the entire front clip and it had a lot of nice pieces bolts hardware um, this front bumper came with it um some of the other trim on the car as i was putting it together i found it locally here from shops that were redoing these cars there was two two 57 chevy projects going on in town and they were basically old restorations that were being freshened up so i was able to buy a lot of the trim um and basically all the glass with the frames this window's broke because this door doesn't shut very good you have to slam this door extremely hard because the car's so messed up but i kind of like the broken glass i think it's kind of a cool character thing um, on this rear quarter panel right here this was like a nightmare on the car it was all cut out it was it was bashed in here a lot of the problems were in this area of the car well i couldn't find an original quarter panel for a two-door hardtop bel air i could find post uh car panels and uh i could find chinese panels but i didn't like to i didn't want to do this much chinese metal i did find one car that was in a fire the guy wanted two thousand dollars for the car probably should have bought it um but it had good panels on it. My friend Ramon at the time um, found this four-door panel for me in Los Angeles and my buddy Russ, he was working down there so he went and picked it up. So this four-door panel allowed me to get at least the car straightened out to where I could put some of the trim on it. And then I did buy the, the better quality Chinese uh, little rust repair panel for the trim down and fix that. So that, that was how I did this corner. Once I got the car pulled back into position, I was really worried about whether or not I was going to get a windshield in it. So I called my buddy Steve Barrett. I said, hey, I'm going to have to buy this windshield. The windshields are very expensive for these cars. I think at the time it was $475 for a windshield and the rubber. So I said, go ahead and get it and let's see if we can put it in. So he came over and he sat the windshield in and he said, you know, if you'll spread the car apart just a little bit, he goes, I think the windshield will go in. So that's what I did. I used to come along between my hoist and I pulled the car apart. And at the whole time, I'm trying to keep the doors closing. I'm trying to make the doors open and close properly. The driver's side turned out really good. The passenger side, not so much, but I'm lucky that the passenger side door even opens. As bad as this car was, it should have just been thrown away and you just start over. So he put the rope in the window Boom, pulled the windshield right into it. It seals good enough for Arizona. If I lived in a rainy climate, it would be terrible. I don't even have wipers on the car. I've, I've left wipers off of it. I don't drive it in the rain. But, so under the hood, it's not pretty. It's just an LS. They're ugly engines. I mean, obviously it has air conditioning. If you look here, there's holes right here. This is where my intercooler holes were. 
had the intercooler mounted here. The turbocharger was mounted right up here. It was a single turbocharger. And uh, I pretty much gave up on that project because uh, you got to put a lot of money into these motors to turbo them and make them live. And of course, we put air conditioning on everything in Lake Havasu. So it has a vintage air unit in it. Um, when I was building this car, the LSs were kind of hard to come by. They were kind of expensive. So my brother needed a dune buggy for his place in Mexico. So I had this cool little red dune buggy. It was kind of a, a fun little Volkswagen car. And he said, why don't you trade me that dune buggy for this LS engine I have? He had an LS engine that had 35,000 miles on it. He had a transmission shop at the time and he built me a, a really good 4L60 with all the good parts in it. I put a TCS converter in it and uh, my buddy Brian Macy does all my tuning. He did the tuning on it. So fast forward a little bit, I decided to turbocharge the car. I put a turbocharger on it and it was making about 600 horsepower with the turbocharger on it but I kept breaking pistons in it because I drive with a heavy foot and I just couldn't keep my foot out of it so we ended up taking the turbocharger off and going back to naturally aspirated I did put high compression pistons in it so it's a high compression 5.3 um, the car has air conditioning the car has uh, Bluetooth radio and it's actually a pretty nice quiet car to drive all the interior stuff was done by my buddy Tim Case, except for the headliner. The headliner I bought used from one of the cars that was being restored here in town. Um, I got to give a special shout out to uh, my neighbor Chuck Candle. Um, he horse traded me a lot of trim. He has a 57 that he's had since he was, he was quite young. And uh, the grill and um, a lot of this trim back here, a lot of the Bel Air badges, some of the Chevy badges, um, I got that from him because he was putting newer trim on his car and he just kept kicking me down his old parts. So thank you, Chuck, for that. Um, inside the car, it has the, the 57 Chevy door squeak. Obviously this piece of trim is turquoise. It doesn't match the other side. I was just, as I put this car together, I decided to just use what I could, leave the colors how they were, because I was never gonna paint this car, and I never will paint this car. This car will never see paint as long as I own it, as long as I'm alive. I made the, the, the little custom seats to where that this one would tilt up. You can get into the back seat. And if you look at the dash right here, the dash is in really bad shape. It's all bent up and uh, I just, I left all the scars there just so that, uh, you know, people could see what this car's been through. So I know for a fact this car has inspired a couple of car builders to, uh, to just build 57 Chevys like this. Uh, Dan over at D&D Speed Shop. This car inspired David Newburn. Um, a few years ago, we were at SEMA and I picked him and Cotton and Mike Finnegan up 
and I gave them a ride, basically an Uber, to the racetrack. Our Uber kicks ass. <laughs> <laughs> Our Uber's got a 57 Chevy. It's got an LS in it, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Nine cars to put this together. And air conditioning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. well, there. There you go. And after that, David Newburn said, I am building a 57 Chevy. So his green car was inspired by this car. Um, pretty cool that uh, you see guys doing rat rod 57s like this because these cars are so valuable and so expensive to build. It's kind of cool when you can just take a bunch of rusty parts and put them together. And if you see Dan over at D&D Speed Shop, he takes four doors and moves the post and puts two door doors on them. And that's pretty cool. I, I like that kind of stuff. So uh, we're gonna fire it up and take y'all for a ride in it. Yeah, you ready to go for a ride in this hot rod? drive it all the time it's one of my favorites I don't know I like the ute anymore as well my VW it's kind of handy for going out and picking stuff up but this car yeah you jump in it and go anywhere it loves Lake Havasu it's geared right for it what's the furthest you've driven this car I think Las Vegas Las Vegas is the furthest I've taken it and it roads pretty good it, it's just glides along. We have a bridge in town and it's really rough. It's got humpty doos. Anybody who lives here knows the bridge I'm talking about. This car will take that bridge at any speed and it just glides across it. You don't feel the car move like it is very stable. So anyway, it's lunchtime. Let's go to in and out and get something to eat. That pretty much sums up the old Hot Rod 57. Thanks for watching. Down yard. Hi, Rand. Is that? What? How much did that cost? No. <laughs> <laughs>